8 Types of Foundation Used in Construction In this video, you are going to learn about 1. Shallow Foundations, and 2. Deep Foundations These two major types of foundation, have 8 subdivisions together. Foundation is one of the essential parts of the structure. A structure refers to a building, bridge, dam, etc., or anything that is constructed, or built from different interrelated parts with a fixed location on the ground. A superstructure is anything that is constructed above the ground. Let's start with the definition of a foundation. A foundation is defined as the lower part of a structure, usually beneath the superstructure. A foundation is designed to distribute the weight of a superstructure evenly over the ground or soil or rock. A foundation provide a firm support for the superstructure, and must have sufficient bearing capacity and suitable settlement characteristics. The weight of a superstructure on the foundation must not exceed the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil. In some cases, footing is used as a synonym for shallow foundations. To summarize the definition, foundation is the part of a structure on which the building stands. The solid ground on which the superstructure rests is known as foundation bed. Next. Why a foundation is provided. Foundation should fulfill the following objectives. A. Distribute the weight of the structure over a large area of soil. B. Avoid unequal settlement. C. Prevent the lateral movement of the structure. D. Increase structural stability. Next. Why there are different types of foundations. There are different types of foundations because there are different types of soil and the bearing capacity of the soil is different for each type of soil. Depending on the soil profile, size, and load of the structure. Engineers chose different kinds of foundation after site investigations and soil analysis results. All foundations are divided into two categories, shallow and deep foundations. The term shallow and deep foundation refer to the depth of the soil at which it is placed. If the width of the foundation is greater than the depth, it is labeled as the shallow foundation. If the width is smaller than the depth of the foundation it is called as deep foundation. Next. Let's consider shallow foundations and types. As the shallow foundation depth is low and it is economical, it is the most popular type of foundation for lightweight structures. Let's discuss types of shallow foundations. 1. Isolated spread footing. Isolated spread footing is the most widely recognized and most straightforward shallow foundation type, as this is the most economical type. Isolated spread footing are typically utilized for shallow establishments to convey and spread concentrated burdens caused, for instance, by pillars or columns. Isolated spread footing are generally used for ordinary buildings, typically up to five stories. Isolated footing comprises a foundation directly at the base of the segment. Every section has its footing. Isolated spread footing straightforwardly transfer the loads from the column to the soil. Isolated spread footing might be rectangular, square, or roundabout. Isolated spread footing can comprise both reinforced or non-reinforced material. For the non-reinforced footing, the stature of the footing has to be more prominent to give the vital spreading of the load. They should possibly be utilized when it is sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that no differing settlements will happen under the whole structure. Spread footings are inadmissible for the orientation of large loads. The size of the footing can be roughly calculated by dividing the total load at the column base by the allowable bearing capacity of the soil. The followings are the types of spread footing. A. Single pad footing. B. Stepped footing for a column. C. Sloped footing for a column. D. Wall footing without step. E. Stepped footing for walls. F. Grillage foundation. To decide when to use shallow foundations, it is necessary to know when it is economical. It is economical. A. When the load of the structure is relatively low. B. When columns are not closely placed. C. When the bearing capacity of the soil is high at a shallow depth. Now, we are done with isolated spread footing under shallow foundation. Next, still under shallow foundation, is number 2, wall footing or strip footing. Wall footing is also known as continuous footing. This type is used to distribute loads of structural or non-structural load-bearing walls to the ground. In such a way that the load-bearing limit of the soil isn't outperformed. Wall footing or strip footing runs along the direction of the wall. The width of the strip footing is usually two to three times the width of the wall. 
The wall footing is a continuous slab strip along the length of the wall. Stone, brick, reinforced concrete, etc., are used for the construction of wall foundations. A. On account of block walls, the footing comprises a few courses of bricks. The least course being generally double the expansiveness of the wall above. B. On account of stone masonry walls, the counterbalances could be 15 cm, with the statues of the course as 30 cm. Along these lines, the size of footings is marginally more than that of the block divider footings. C. If the heap on the wall is substantial or the soil is of low bearing limit, this reinforced concrete foundation type can be given. Wall or strip footing is economical. A. When loads to be transmitted are of small magnitude. B. When it is placed on dense sand and gravel. Now, we are done with wall or strip footing under shallow foundation. Next. Under shallow foundation, number 3, is combined footing. The combined footing is very similar to the isolated footing. When the columns of the structure are carefully placed, or the bearing capacity of the soil is low and their footing overlap each other, combined footing is provided. It is fundamentally a blend of different footings, which uses the properties of various balances in a single footing dependent on the necessity of the structure. The foundations which are made common to more than one column are called combined footings. There are different types of combined footing, including slab type, slab and beam type, rectangular, raft, and strap beam type. They may be square, T-shaped, or trapezoidal. The main objective is the uniform distribution of loads under the entire area of footing. For this is necessary to coincide with the center of gravity of the footing area with the center of gravity of the total loads. Combined foundations are economic. A. When the columns are placed close to each other. B. When the column is close to the property line and the isolated footing would cross the property line or become eccentric. C. When the dimensions of one side of the footing are restricted to some lower value. Next. Under shallow foundation, number 4, is cantilever or strap footing. Strap footings are similar to combined footings. Reasons for considering or choosing strap footing are identical to the combined one. In strap footing, the foundation under the columns is built individually and connected by a strap beam. When the edge of the footing cannot be extended beyond the property line, the exterior footing is connected by a strap beam with interior footing. Next, under shallow foundation, number 5, raft or mat foundation. Raft or mat foundations are used where other shallow or pile foundations are not suitable. It is also recommended in situations where the bearing capacity of the soil is inadequate. The load of the structure is to be distributed over a large area or structure is subjected continuously to shocks or jerks. Raft or mat foundation consists of a reinforced concrete slab or T-beam slab placed over the entire area of the structure. In this type, the whole basement floor slab acts as the foundation. The total load of the structure is spread evenly over the entire area of the structure. This is called raft or mat because, in this case, the building seems like a vessel that floats on a sea of soil. Raft foundations are economic. A. When the soil is weak and the load has to be spread over a large area. B. When the structure includes a basement. C. When columns are closely placed. D. When other kinds of foundations are not feasible. E. When differential settlement is to be prevented. We are done with the five types of shallow foundations. Next. Let's discuss the second type of foundation. Deep foundations. Types of deep foundation. The followings are the types of deep foundation. The first type of deep foundation is one, pile foundation. Pile is a common type of deep foundation. They are used to reduce cost, and when as per soil condition considerations. It is desirable to transmit loads to soil strata which are beyond the reach of shallow foundations. The followings are the types of pile foundations. Based on function or use, which are A. Sheet piles B. Load-bearing piles C. End-bearing piles D. Friction piles E. Soil compactor piles Based on materials and construction method, which are A. Timber piles B. Concrete piles, C. Steel piles, D. Composite piles. Pile is a slender member with a small cross-sectional area compared to its length. 
It is used to transmit foundation loads to a deeper soil or rock strata when the bearing capacity of soil near the surface is relatively low. Pile transmits load either by skin friction or bearing. Piles are also used to resist structures against uplift and provide structure stability against lateral and overturning forces. Pile foundations are economic. A. When soil with great bearing capacity is at a greater depth. B. When there are chances of construction of irrigation canals in the nearby area. C. When it is very expensive to provide raft or grillage. D. When the foundation is subjected to a heavily concentrated load. E. In marshy places. F. When the topsoil layer is compressible in nature. G. In the case of bridges, when the scouring is more in the riverbed. Pile foundations can again be classified based on its material and its mechanism of load transfer or function. Next, the second type of deep foundation is 2. Pier foundation. Pier is an underground structure that transmits a more massive load, which cannot be carried by shallow foundations. It is usually shallower than piles. The pier foundation is generally utilized in multi-story structures. Pier foundation is a cylindrical structural member that transfer heavy load from superstructure to the soil by end bearing. Unlike piles, pier can only transfer load by bearing and not by skin friction. Pier foundation is economical. A. When sound rock strata lie under a decomposed rock layer at the top. B. The topsoil is stiff clay which resists driving the bearing pile. C. When a heavy load is to be transferred to the soil. Pier foundation has many advantages. A. It has a broad scope of assortment with regards to structure. B. It sets aside cash and time as it doesn't require broad removal of a ton of cement. C. Bearing limits can increment by under reaming the base. Along with the advantages, it has a few disadvantages as well. A. If one post or dock is harmed, it can prompt critical harm to the general establishment. B. It can be vitality wasteful if not protected appropriately. C. Floors must be intensely, vigorously protected, and shielded from critters. Next, the second type of deep foundation is 3. Kaisen Foundation. Kaisen Foundation is a watertight retaining structure used as a bridge pier, construction of the dam, etc. It is generally used in structures that require foundation beneath a river or similar water bodies. The reason for choosing the Kaisen is that it can be floated to the desired location and then sunk into place. Kaisen foundation is a ready-made hollow cylinder depressed into the soil up to the desired level and then filled with concrete, which ultimately converts to a foundation. It is mostly used as bridge piers. Caissons are sensitive to construction procedures. There are several types of Kaisen foundations. A. Box caissons. B. Floating caissons. C. Pneumatic caissons. D. Open caissons. E. Sheeted caissons. F. Excavated caissons. Kaisen foundations are economic when A. The pile cap requirement is to be minimized. B. Noise and vibration needed to be reduced. C. It has to be placed beneath water bodies. D. Highly lateral and axial loading capacity is required. Finally, the foundation is a structural supporting member that transfers the total load form slab, beam, column, wall, etc. The main objective of the foundation is to provide stability to the total structure and safely transfer the total load from the structure to the soil at an optimum cost. To conclude, types of shallow foundation are 1. Isolated spread footing 2. Wall or strip footing 3. Combined footing 4. Cantilever or strap footing and 5. Raft or mat foundation. And, types of deep foundation are. 1. Pile foundation. 2. Pier foundation. 3. Kaisen foundation. This, is, construction.